uh, practice. Now I hand it over to uh, Dr. Mudassar. Dr. Mudassar is uh, uh, working as a uh, lecturer in uh, Center of Excellence currently. Dr. Mudassar, please. Over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Can you confirm me that the screen is online now? Yes. Yes. All right. All right. My name is Dr. Mudassar Iqbal, I'm working as a lecturer in Center of Excellence in Water Resources Engineering, UIT Lahore, since April 2020. First of all, I would like to thank Dr. Ijaz for helping in organizing such uh, activity, there, which was difficult for me to handle alone. The, and also, I would like to thank Dr. Noor, Dr. Noor Muhammad Khan, professor, uh, professor and director, Center of Excellence in Water Resources Engineering, to keep continue such type of webinar series from the center platform. And I also would like to thank Dr. Dr. Muhammad Ashraf for sparing the time and, and give, a, give a brief uh, earth comprehensive presentation on using the R language for data downloading, remote sensing products. Okay, well, the part uh, that I will present is uh, hydrological modeling for snowpack catchment using UVC watershed model. The outlines of the presentation is first the introduction of the of the UVC or hydrological modeling, and then objective of this of this presentation and also to prepare some files for the inputs of UBC and then editing of those files like watershed file and other about uh, some calibration procedure for the UBC model and after getting the results and its presentation and besides these outlines we also uh, we also uh, complete some hands-on exercise that uh, we have shared the organizers and his team uh, shared the hydrological data for exercise. Let's start the introduction. Since we all are aware that Pakistan has one of the largest river network, which consists mainly of this river, Jehlam, Chinab, Kabul, Ravi, and Satruj. And the contribution of inflows of each river in this system is defined according to the season. And in rivers, Indus and Kabul are the dominant source of water, while in Chinab and Jehlam, in Indus and Kabul, the dominant source of water is and also same as Chenab and Jehlam are snow and glaciers melts and as well as monsoon in summer season. Moreover, uh, about the importance of the UBC watershed model that our director, our director Noor Muhammad Khan also elaborated that we have our poten hydropower potential in the mountainous areas and the development of the projects are exist in that areas. So to find out the water availability for the hydropower projects and 
researchers and organizations are using different type different ideological model or build their own model and say the developed model researcher organization also use the ubc ubc watershed model ubc watershed model is a semi distributed ideological model which divides the entire watershed into the several elevation bands so a model the model was this model was developed for fraser river system in british columbia by by pipe by anthony pipes and mike michael c quick 1976 it this uh, ubc further enhanced and tested now now we have its user uh, user friendly uh, window based model by by michael c quick in 1995 did he, he produce it or its script produced window version in 1995 this model computes daily and hourly the watershed outflows using daily data daily precipitation or daily temperature temperature data since this since this model was originally designed for forecasting runoff from mountainous catchment for this reason model is divided into the area elevation bands to deal with the orographic effects orographic or, or, orographic gradient mm, of precipitation and temperature due to the mountainous catchment we we have in this model some routines some model 1 some model 2 some model 3 or we can say that we uh, we can divide its structure into three sub models 1 to 3 the first model uh, divides the precipitation and temperature data to all elevation bands like it deals with the elevation area bands so temperature and precipitation data divides uh, divides point data or temperature data precipitation data divides to all all elevation bands in this in this routine and the and the change of temperature with elevation governs the precipitation as snow or rain and also melting the snow packs and glaciers in this sub model in this part of the structure the second deals with the soil moisture that that controls the, that controls the runoff or uh, we can say uh, it distributes the uh, runoff into four parts like fast fast uh, runoff generation medium runoff generation or slow runoff in upper ground water uh, and extremely slow runoff in the deep ground water part and the third is related to its routing and release of runoff to the outlet as it is it routes and permits the release of runoff to the outlet of the watershed and this routing is based on linear reservoir theory like that uh, assures us the conservation of mass and uh, water equilibrium now uh, next is in this presentation we have uh, our objective that make the new user familiar with this model with the ubc watershed model and the second is how we prepare the files for the for the ubc inputs model. the third one is a brief present brief idea regarding the calibration procedures the the detail we can also uh, for the detail for the calibration we can also uh, uh, search many articles uh, and uh, its manual the next is preparation of meteorological data files normally we organize our data or the meteorological data if i talk about the excel that in date uh, we we keep date in first one column and the data in others columns tmax main presentation or we can also arrange our data by keeping in one keeping year in one column second in month month in second column and day in third next the next column uh, data in the next columns so similarly for the ubc we keep the same we keep the same format 
and but after the data we we add one more column like uh, the data finished up to the g up to the column g and the next in next column h we just we just uh, add a double space uh, in the column and drag for the whole for the all rows next next is this is a xls file now we need to gather all uh, the date we need to gather the date and the data in one one column like let's let's see the i column and the for this sir, uh, please kindly sir please uh, tell us yes, about yes. double space again what is double space just we need to uh, press two times space in the next column i think if you understand then just uh, the, the in, column will no be empty any, the column will be empty with no value yes yes will will be empty yes yes sir, will be empty okay sir just okay, okay, double sir. thank you and the and the next step is to gather this data with date in the next column and the keep and so for this uh, i have provided to organizers that uh, of hydrological data or excel prepared data folder so you, you we can see the steps it's a just simple the researchers the researchers every or uh, persons have their own choices how to manage this data but uh, but the point is that the data should be in the string command like in the uh, easy to handle uh, not should be the like reference to or value errors provide the value value errors or a reference error in the common common errors in the excel so the for gathering just use the command of and column to column column and next column and next column like this so we will we all the things in one all the things in one column and then we need to then we need to separate or copy this column to the next sheet or another another excel workbook then say just we need to uh, yeah, uh, here uh, i will i will uh, explain the header the heading of this column should be the starting date of the starting date of the uh, data and ending date of the data uh, this should be the uh, heading of the uh, data column so here in in this slide a slash is a miss uh, after the month after, after the month so we can keep the slash and then we need to save just a, a excel file to the comma delimited file after after saving uh, after saving the comma delimited file we need to just change its its extension dots we can replace the file Uh, name uh, dot csv to dot edm. This is the uh, UBC input uh, model uh, model format. Like the firstly, this model was a binary binary DOS base, so we need bi binary data, and then we need to then we can change that binary to ASCII for the uh, for getting the. Uh, same data into the window 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 structure the next is i think if it is clear then we can move on the hydrological data file preparation if if somebody have question to prepare the uh, adm file then please can you she can raise the hand or my, uh, sir i am not clear team. about how how we will uh, change the csv uh, extension into aes or D adm it is not clear sir okay okay i explain just close the file and keep any name with dot csv just we like i i am not sure uh, about you can see my screen or not if you can see then please inform me yes yes sir we can see yes okay. we can see sir so, like, yes okay like this 
this is a dot csv we need to just we need to just uh, change its its name like rename rename it and change the extension like adq simple a, it, it is a error of the file name already exists in this folder so okay sir okay sir understood understood we Thank just you. have to change the last three digits extension extension yes, yes. okay extension sir understood okay. Sir, we have ATM and ADQ. So what is the difference between ATM and ADQ? Yeah, and we, uh, you, we, we can just, uh, it, uh, we can uh, rem rem remember from the M and Q. M, M is yes. for the metrology data, and Q is for the discharge data. It is a short term. Like uh, this, these are the these are the files for the ATM file for metrology, and ADQ is file for the discharge or runoff. Okay, sir. It's a file format for inputting the data in UBC watershed model. Uh, excuse me, sir. I have one question regarding yes, uh, input files uh, preparation. Yes, please, please. Um, <clears throat> I'm Salman Khan from Faculty of Engineering, Lahore Leeds University. Oh, uh, uh, unlike a uh, SWOT model, uh, in case of SWOT yes. model, when we were uh, preparing input files uh, for yes. each uh, climate station, MET station, so yes, yes. Uh, we, we were having uh, precipitation files uh, along with uh, T max and T minimum, maximum temperature and minimum temperature separate. In this case, right. uh, if for example, we have 10 stations, climate stations or 20 climate yes. stations. So uh, 20 files, to 20, 20 files. All yeah, we need to have is. only 20 files uh, yeah. for uh, for uh, UBC watershed model. Yeah. Am I but, clear? But, but, but yes, 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 you are clear. But uh, uh, so UBC has a limitation. Only it, it can be we can input the five climatic station data. So we have only we can, only five climatic yes. station. Oh, for example, five. Five. as I'm working on uh, I I did work on Mangla watershed using SWOT yes, model yes. Uh, on yes. climate change impact assessment. assessment. And yes. I used a uh, SWOT model for that, but uh, the, the problem is uh, SWOT model is not uh, incorporated with glacier melt uh, component. And I'm right. now I'm willing to use uh, UBC watershed uh, in com for comparative study. So yes. uh, is it possible uh, to use a UBC watershed because I'm having 21 climate yes. stations in my watershed? 21 climate stations? Yeah, you, you, can, you can perform the UBC four times and or okay. you, you can divide in, in the whole catchment into the sub catchment or uh, four, four, at four least catchment I would I, yes. I would need to run I would need to run the model uh, four model. or five times yeah. yes four to five okay times. Sir. then okay sir. Th then you need to then you need to collect uh, gather the all uh, simulated data for the calibration or validation okay sir got it uh, for Thank showing you. showing the showing showing the whole picture of the okay sir of the watershed Okay, next is preparation right. of the preparation of the hydrological data. So, see, the hydrological data also, yes. It's the next, these, these are the same st uh, steps uh, for the metro for the meteorological data files are the more. So, the window in this in this slide, uh, where the window is pasted for the common elemented format and just change the file yeah just change the file extension that dot csv2 dot adm and we can open uh, we can open that adm file with notepad not simple notepad or notepad plus and we also sometimes uh, we 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 see and uh, we see a uh, that file the quotation mark uh, double commas or quotation mark. We can also uh, remove or not remove does not impact on the running the UBC input. Uh, we can keep the double step, the double uh, quotation mark, or we can remove. It's up to the users. Next is the hydrological data file preparation. So similarly, they, similarly we for the model for the model uh, calibration. We also need uh, hydrological uh, data like discharge. So keep uh, same as 
same as metadata we need to we need to keep the date collective date or uh, like the start data in the columns we can gather uh, at the uh, uh, together or we can uh, we can keep in the we can keep in the next column and save as say comma delimited file and then similarly the change the extension like the uh, adm um, before in the previous slide we changed the extension to adm and we can change the extension now it is q all right understandable for the yeah i have a question sir yes 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 yeah so uh, like dr salman was just mentioning that in swart models we use we, we generally have a lot of temperature stations precipitation stations even with the flow stations we we have uh, an easy way of like specifying the location right i as i see through the meteorological inputs here uh, we did not see any information on their lat long so are we going to specify their location within the model yes in or the next slides in the next slide you, of course we will um, in the when we will go to the next slide of uh, watershed file then there we have this option to keep the location uh, of the climatic station and and right. and same is the same is the case with the hydrological stations also right then yes okay okay thank you yeah next is a so after preparing these adm or adq file we need to uh, we need to uh, we need to change or uh, change the these file to bdm excuse me sir DQ. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, in hydrological data, we do not need to use that command uh, that we previously used for precipitation data. Double and precipitation data. Yes, yes. yes. Double space one. No need to use. Okay, and uh, no need to uh, combine all the columns into one column like we did in precipitation data. Yes, sir. You, if you, if if you use the comma, like you can see column A, we have a date, the second row. Yes, sir. At 2003 slash 0101. If if you use the comma in the end uh, of the um, day, then no need to uh, no need to keep uh, no no need to keep in the next column. And you you can you can paste 11.8 value to the column A with by using A by using the comma. Actually, it's a comma delimited file. Here we do not use because it will be automatically. It will be automatically common delimited. Okay, okay, sir. Fine. Got it, sir. Got it. The next step is to convert our uh, input file ADM and ADQ to BD, BDM or BDQ. So this this step uh, we uh, to convert the files extension we need to uh, oh, we need to use what why UBC watershed uh, model. So in in this. In this uh, by uh, when 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 the uh, users start the model, then the, this is the interface of UVC watershed model. Here we have a menu menu bar icon bar, and in the menu bar from the tool menu we can convert we we select the input data conversion utilities option to convert the ADM or ADQ to BDM or BDQ. All right. In the hands-on exercise, definitely we will perform this this step. Next is this is a conversion window. Uh, how after uh, after after clicking the input data conversion utility, we this get this dialog box will open. Conversion dialog box open, and here we need to here here we need to. Uh, our browse our file, a ADM file for the conversion, and just uh, uh, just uh, press the OK. It will be converted automatically from AES 2003. So AES 2003 file name is a is a climatic station file name, and with extension ADM, it will convert. Just browse it, and it will convert uh, by by the by clicking on OK. So uh, after uh, by clicking the uh, okay, uh, if 
it will ask that uh, it will ask uh, to check some boxes check some boxes uh, it will be it's uh, about the missing data how how it will be deal how it deal the, with the missing values in the in the methodological data then it confirm then it confirms the then the conversion tool confirms from the user the start from uh, about the start date and end date and finally we need to click convert now it will it will be converted to pdm or btp the next is a a watershed file, wet file. It's a it's very important file uh, in the UBC model because it controls or uh, it controls all the things uh, in the uh, UBC UBC model. It it has all the information related to the watershed. So th there there are nine nine ten ten types of the uh, like controls or uh, controls. Uh, or steps we need to deal in the wet file. Uh, first is the time and date, about time and date. Second is the met, met and flow data. Third is the elevation and parameters of climatic station. The fourth is a distribution of met variables. Fifth is a snowmelt function, water distribution, initial conditions, of, and the uh, outflows. The last one is the, are the, about the outflows components from the different hydrological cycles. Editing. The next is the editing. We can we can edit the wet file by two ways. Like wet file also can be open uh, the Notepad or also can open through the window through the software. So. To the software, we use the file menu and we use the file menu and click open wet, wet files. Then browse the, uh, the hands on exercise that we will perform in the end of the presentation. We have provided you uh, wet file or WAT. Just upload, just browse that file, and then when when we will browse the wet file, the left side uh, files list panel, the two files that we previous slide BDM or BDP will be appeared. It will be it will be the sign of that you have. Uh, it will be the sign that you have successfully converted and uh, your web file is successfully uh, running in the UVC window. Rating is continued. So, from the tool menu, from the tool menu, now we can uh, assess our wet wet file from the tools. First step was first step was the up uh, browsing uploading the wet file. Then now is editing uh, edit the wet parameters or edit wet uh, file. So af after clicking the edit wet wet parameters. Uh, the model asks create a new wet file, edit existing wet file. We can edit an existing wet file because we have provided that we have provided the model dot wat file. The next is um, when we, we select the edit an existing an existing wet file. So we can see the below dialog box. The the previous in the previous slide the uh, the descriptive wet file have all the controls, and here we can just here we can see same same controls uh, one by one. Time and date run control, met elevation. Or here, if we click on the like here, I highlighted description of watershed. Then the below it's a below it's a panel appears. And one by one, we can edit. One by one, uh, we can edit the wet file from one. Uh, then we can, if we have something need to change, then we can uh, we can save it again by choosing the save or save as options. Next is in the previous slide, 
all the controls we can we can edit here in the in the window uh, in the in the red file window or not by by opening it in the notepad but some but the fourth one description of watershed we need we need, if of course we need to edit or input in, in this control so for this uh, we need to analyze or our catchment we need to analyze some getting or some information about the watershed we need we need to our catchment characteristics using uh, using using products of uh, gem using products of elevation land use and glacier that are the input uh, for the this red file you need to use arcgis so the next is in this in in that what's the description file we need to provide mid elevation of the bank as uh, i have uh, explained before that the model model use the elevation elevation area concept so we need to we need to provide we firstly we need to provide the elevation elevation of each band mean elevation we need to provide mean elevation of each band so for this we i i suppose that it's a gis work and most of the users now are are uh, frequently are frequently use the gis or we can learn gis from our uh, friends or students or teachers so just add the watershed layer in the gis to get the mean elevation we need to perform the following steps firstly add the layer of watershed dem go to the then go to its layer properties and select symbology tab and or we need actually we are making a bands or elevation zones or elevation classes so for making the band or classes we need to perform these steps so then after performing in the yeah in the ubc we we can uh, it, it 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 can we, we can maximum input uh, 12 bands of, of the elevation or 12 classes of the elevation up okay. but if we we also suppose that four to eight classes of the elevation or band are better and then then from the property dialog box or symbology or classified and we where, where we need to uh, see the mean elevation of each band okay and here we need to put two things mean elevation uh, each band of each band or area of each band area of each band we can um, we can get uh, from the attributes of the the em file uh, like uh, if we have a 90 counts and uh, counts uh, in the class in the after classification we we can uh, we have counts of each each class then just a multiplication with the dem resolution we can find the area of each band or area of the elevation class the second part from the gis we need to we need to get the frosted fraction of area in the each band the the red file which is which is as which is Represented that C O T R E. So similarly, we have we need to have our we need to collect first land use data of our catchment where we are performing uh, where we are performing uh, hydrological modeling, and then and with that product we have also information uh, about the uh, classes about the uh, land use classes like here, uh, which is a plum watershed. Plum watershed land use data. So, with the legend, we can see much rainfall cropland, cropland, uh, bare bare areas, water bodies. These are the these are the these are the requirement to. Uh, this is our requirement to fill the uh, wet file for description of watershed. So, say, same same like we have uh, like we did in the uh, like we did in the previous slide previous slide for the EEM. we need to add layer of the watershed land use 
then then we need to actually we need land use data for each band so uh, be before uh, we, we 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 also converted we uh, we have to convert it our elevation classes to the polygons by using special analysis tool and extract land use area under each band so uh, you special analysis tool will be used for this process and under each band we need to calculate we need to calculate the land use area of each elevation class with each elevation polygon right and the area of the particular land use class in each band we can also find say, with the count and the multi with multiplication of counts and imagery resolutions we need for the wet file two things here forested area fraction and interminable area so we can get uh, these two these two things that forming uh, this by performing this excuse me sir yes 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 uh, sir i have a question yes uh, basically uh, when we are using mm -hmm. land use data and soil data uh, for swat so we are uh, basically assuming uh, land use and soil data in future projections uh, we keep the land use and soil as uh, same throughout the uh, time slices for 100 years or uh, 60 years or 80 years okay do we have any component uh, in uh, wbc watershed model to count the variation of land use and soil data Uh, while doing future projections for stream flow or uh, sediment transport, etc. I think you, I think same way like in Sabar, uh, for the future we we can make the scenarios, and here also we we make scenarios. Actually, the this model UVC model mostly mostly used in the mountainous areas where the melt where the water water melt and the snow and glacier. so we yes, here uh, exactly sir but so uh, here, in case of here 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 we in, in for the future we need to make the scenario similar we uh, we do for uh, with the savar here also we we do we make the scenarios for glacier melt like 20% yes sir and is increasing like this so this sir, is the land use changes for the uh, uh, we have a limit we have a limitation in swat that we are only uh, using uh, precipitation maximum temperature and minimum temperature uh, which is varying uh, in, in different scenarios like uh, rcp 4.5 and rcp 8.5 oh. yeah do we have any uh, which counts the land use and soil data variation with the passage of time uh, if if you are going to project stream flow or sediment transport so could we have any component incorporating uh, the land use uh, variation or soil data variation uh, for uh, analysis i i basically what i'm going I to see. ask uh, uh, how yeah, can we you, differentiate uh, uh, wbc future, water future state, variations uh, future variations you mean regard. that you mean that uh, how we we tackle the uh, future variations in the ubc exactly yeah. sir the yeah. the land use uh, which we, we are the land use which we are we are having now right now uh, yeah. would not be the same just after the uh, just after 50 years or 100 years so we, we would okay. have okay. a lot I of urbanization noting. deforestation exactly sir okay okay i am noting your point and in here uh, I I don't think so in the existing UBC uh, UBC watershed model it has but it has also uh, GIS it, uh, we have also UBC with watershed mapper like uh, inclusion uh, like in, input all the things through GIS in the UBC so there we can generate the scenarios for variation future variation but that will be also by making of ourselves not with our future product. Uh, not uh, any product is available for okay, future distribution. Okay, sir. All right. So Thank you. in the here in this slide, the the at the bottom, it's a table we can make, we can make, and we can uh, 
uh, our mosaic our we can mosaic our classes language classes and then the class numbers their total counts and the band wise will within one band within band one band two how how much counts how much counts exist uh, in the of the irrigate irrigated crop land so the in the last is a resolution of the uh, re resolution of the grid or resolution primary we can multiply and we can multiply counts to the resolution primary to get the area next one is the inputting of the glacial information in gcs what wet file so uh, uh, for this we need to collect the first the glacier in the glacier glacier file from the glacier inventory so uh, uh, after getting after getting the glacier file uh, then the same steps we can repeat like special analysis to to extract the glacier area under each band and calculation of the glacier area of each band these are the requirements uh, for the description of watershed where we need to put as a parameters the next is a in the next is a calibration procedure simply simply calibration can be completed in the in three steps uh, we can named as a stage 1 calibration stage 2 and 3 and also uh, we we say we say that parameters are divided in three groups as i also uh, like 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 model structure uh, is uh, categorized in three sub models similarly parameters also uh, can be categorized in three groups related to precipitation water and routing parameters so stage 1 calibration stage 2 calibration so three calibration it means that the we need to the next slide we need to set the stage 1 calibration the parameters important in stage 1 calibration are or can found in the distribution of meteorological variables list distribution of meteorological variable is a head is a main control in the wet file so in in that control we can find the we can find these parameters and we can stage 1 calibration means we need to adjust firstly we need to adjust firstly these parameters these parameters and then and the others are no others are uh, no need to change or uh, just uh, fix as 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 the given the wet wet file de by default then then we need to run the model and check our statistics uh, either the calibration is okay or not then we need to change then we need to go the stage 2 calibration and these the, these are uh, these these parameters are uh, related to the physiographic uh, physiographic param physiographic condition of the watershed so uh, the here and like and also the we have stage 3 but where we need to go when we need to go this is important so one by one we need to go in these calibrations and in the ubc we have more than Uh, more than 100 parameters uh, more than 100 parameters we you cannot uh, it, it's a, it, it will be a very time taking process if we change one one parameter at one time and run again and again so so that's why we do uh, so that's why in the ubc we have three stages of the calibration okay and the ubc also tested and applied in the himalayan range uh, from the since many since the many years and developers also works on the marginal range and fix their calibration uh, calibration parameters so in the stage 3 calibration process deal with the gradients of behavior in the watershed it is a very fine tuning process gradient like gradient can be assessed because the snow melt process can to be most active in the few elevation band at a time starting at low elevation early in the season and progressive upward as the snow line descends so these are the uh, we we we, uh, we can also uh, we can also find that definitions definition their ranges and uh, their ranges of 
uh, of the parameters and from from the manuals and the of the previous published literature uh, here is a, here, here i am uh, i'm telling about one study that uh, the article uh, title is ranking sensitivity calibrating parameters of ubc watershed models so in that in this study the uh, in the ubc the authors try to rank more sen more sens uh, sens sensible parameters for this ubc for this ubc and they they list out list out these parameters and i also i also suggest and i also uh, use uh, these by by keeping these a uh, ranking in, in our model studies so in the uh, the next is a running the ubc model and its results or its statistics after the adjustment of parameters we can run the model uh, or we should run the model as shown from the file from the menu menu bar select we need to select run and in the run run menu ubc watershed model and then uh, just it will it will after running it will not show anything and then we need to run statistics in the st when we will click the statist run statistics then where the this this dialog box will open and ask about the confirmation of the date start and end date and statistics for whole uh, always uh, i remember we should remember that uh, the statistics for whole period box should be checked and output output file name should be the uh, default same as our bad file the output file name will be the same as our bad file the next is simulation or or results or graph or reports how it will how it will how it looks in the ubc so we can also view our statistics report in the notepad then in the Text text for text form or also from the wind wind structure UBC. So from the view menu, we wish we can uh, we can see the view statistics report. The statistics report we have coefficient of efficiency and coefficient of determination. The second second last second last columns. And this coefficient of efficiency or determination. Uh, help us to decide whether our calibration procedure is up to what extent it is uh, it is good so uh, this is a graphical window by uh, we have also uh, like on the left side of the ubc ubc model we have uh, list pan file list panel on in by running by running the watershed model we have created dot bdc file when we will just click on the bbc file double click on the bbc file it will it will open it will open the graph graphical uh, graphical output or graphical results of the uh, calibration so we can set uh, the chart we can set the chart uh, configuration from using the uh, chart menu from the from the menu bar Yeah, uh, run of components from different hydrological sources for getting the uh, for for viewing the uh, melts from the glacier snow or uh, its the groundwater contribution or its the rainfall contribution. We we can we can see the icon bar. The last icon is a select component. Select component I, I, I can choose just uh, choose this icon and um, this dialog box will be open. And here, here we can see the first is observed flow, second is calculated flow. Observed means we have provided in the BDC 
we have provided in the adq file or that later we convert it into bdq file the third the third box is a difference in flow the fourth one we need to check uh, and we need to check uh, fifth, fifth one also sixth and seventh for dif for different for displaying the different melts from the uh, hydrological sources snow melt glacier contribution rainfall outflow ground water from upper and deep 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 zones and then these these are the components that the window is asking the user which which type of the uh, you want to see the graphical results after by clicking uh, by checking these components we can see the graphical results window like this the uh, legends are observed the uh, calculated snow melts glacier contribution in for the like this so how so in, in this in this presentation uh, worked with uh, kalam kalam hydrological station kalam kalam hydrological uh, kalam catchment is located in the uh, so sawad district or the uh, or it is the upper upper basin of the other sawad river is a more uh, a little bit about the information so how we can get the output file in txt or xls x file like in the previous slide we have we have graphical results how we can how we can get its uh, txt or a xls x data uh, from from the ubc model so it same like we in the from the start uh, in start we converted our uh, adm or uh, adq files using the uh, conversion tool from the tools so it is a just reverse process we need to select file name uh, our clam for bdc that is uh, it will be created uh, when we will, when we will run the model just Uh, browse uh, the output file and convert. It will be saved. It 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 will be saved as the uh, dot bdc file. That the dot adc file. It will be it will be saved as a dot adc file that we can uh, open in the notepad uh, or we can convert that file to csv or to excel sx files. Okay, this. this result file have have the some columns we can say the first is date the first the first is date one and the second is observed flow third is calculated flow fourth is uh, fourth is the uh, difference between observed and simulated flows and the next four four columns are highlighted these are the contributions from the different Uh, hydrological cy cycles components like from glacier snow. like list wise uh, as as we just try to check boxes from the uh, in the previous slide it is related to that glacier glacier melts snow melts rainfall ground water like this okay uh, we have also some limitation to use the ubc watershed model which use the number of elevation bands up to 12 uh, we we use normally normally we use four to eight bands for the data easiness to handle the easiness because all the data is need to manual input so the next is the input is daily day, daily data is required for the ubc watershed model daily or hourly not uh, we cannot perform it monthly or on yearly uh, temporal temporal scale and uh, about the stations up to five stations we can support the next is now we we can also uh, perform our uh, some uh, examples on the uh, on the ubc watershed model so in this regard we have shared with you the data so we need to we need to uh, up, open the ubc watershed model uh, software and like we have guided one by one one by one now we will do by uh, by practice excuse me okay. 
Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, before going to the practice exercise, I would like to ask few questions. Uh, yes. Like you have discussed here, you have divided your model into three sub model. That is a number of sub model. One is the meteorological model in which you discuss about the meteorological parameters like uh, temperature, rainfall and the flows. And the second one is your soil moisture parameter. And the third one is your uh, routing parameters. But in the model two, which is, that is uh, soil moisture uh, parameters in which you haven't discussed like, uh, that, like, how you have prepared like, those, those parameters actually, and actually, uh, which routing techniques have you used for this? They, they, they imp I think I one parameters. Uh, OK, uh, one parameters. We got from the impermeable area or yeah. areas related to the soil. So, and <sighs> like, so, uh, yes, you uh, like HMS model, they have a uh, soil moisture counting parameter techniques in which uh, they have uh, multiple uh, parameters like uh, uh, what percentage of the soil is there, the groundwater share, the maximum infiltration, soil storage and other parameter in previous yes, area, course, all those course, parameters. If, of course, if we if we open our red file now. Yeah. And. And also you have a discuss about the uh, routing techniques, which method routing, you have opted for the. Actually, yeah. actually, the, actually the, uh, the routing techniques are uh, purely, uh, it's not, uh, I mean to say that, it's not a newly UBC, watershed model uh, oh. that we are using. Uh, it's a, uh, from the 50 years uh, we are using. So yes. it so it is not uh, not difficult at this time, not difficult to uh, search uh, search on the website or uh, published articles. So uh, here here our purpose was that that is the basically the physics uh, the on the physics and or the param parameters of the physics, physics, we we can also uh, we can we have uh, our uh, our plan, uh, our plan in the webinars. We we will also discuss in some webinars the physics of the uh, physics of yeah. the, these hydrological model. So, so, so these uh, are the by actually, default yeah. parameters which you have mentioned in your word file. Yeah. No. Or you so have calculated we, these parameters yeah, for your watershed. We have, we, we have calculated. We have. Okay. Calculated. And so that's why uh, in the in the presented slides, uh, okay. presented slides, the results of the statistics are uh, are fine, quite matching. And the second thing I would like to ask is this: no merit uh, uh, techniques are whether you use are uh, is this uh, model is using the energy based technique or the temperature index method? No energy energy based uh, energy based uh, technique here uh, like uh, if you, if you can. If you can see my screen, that yes, I this, can. This, this is a uh, equation that the model used for snow melt, snow melting MMs. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, like uh, three energy contributors so, are given. Uh, so I given think the units of water equivalent. First is convective. Yeah, transfer. I think it's. I think you have taken uh, the maximum and minimum temperature. So I, as yes, I know, it's a temperature index technique rather than the energy yes. based techniques. At, Yes. Not yes, yes. we cannot say the totally mm -hmm. temperature temperature based mm -hmm. because also so we, we have also here the net radiation energy inputs yes. and radiant energy factors. We also put in the in the UBC. We consider those parameters: energy factors, radiant energy factors, net radiation energy. Factors. Okay. There's, there's some of the parameters of energy yes. techniques also yes, being yes. used. Okay, 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 okay. And the second, I would like to ask that as you mentioned that you can incorporate your uh, uh, precipitation data in daily or the hourly basis. So if I would, I would like to add uh, some of the satellites that are, are uh, provides me the hourly uh, rainfall data as well, like, but the temperature data is usually daily based temperature data is maximum minimum temperature data. Yeah. In that case, like, how I can incorporate uh, my uh, temperature data and hourly rainfall okay. data in Yes, if if uh, you can see my screen, that here is here, here is time increment of climate data, like yes. daily or hourly. Yeah. But but it, but in that case, like uh, like if I you have uh, twenty four hours hour rainfall data, um, yes. that after each hour I'm getting the rainfall, we, but the temperature we, data we is a single value. We, we need to manage. Uh, we need to manage that same temporal scale. 
both that first one. Okay, for the, both for the UBC input for the for the inputs of UBC. Okay, but I usually we don't have a maximum and minimum temperature values on a single value we have. Okay, but if we want to run the model in hourly basis or we need to input the data in hourly basis for rainfall, then in that case, you mean that you mean that we have one data in hourly and another data is like, so why not like, why not we why not we can why not we get the daily daily single value from the hourly available data. Sometimes we are uh, usually we uh, normally run the modern real time scenarios like uh, in uh, the recent uh, monsoon season. Uh, we are watching it uh, how much flow will be coming uh, in the stream or the rivers yeah, at uh, yeah. desired uh, gauging stations. Again, uh, in that case, uh, we don't want uh, that, uh, how much rainfall uh, will be uh, accumulated and then we run the model. We are watching uh, the system on real time base rather than that uh, we uh, run the model when the rainfall has gone uh, for the last. Day. So, I mean, in so that case, is that model is applicable or not? Is, is, is not is not exactly the temporal scale should be the same for one okay. station. For okay. one station. Yes. Okay. Uh, and if I talk about the climatic station, uh, for that for the particular climate station, temporal scale will be the same. Okay. Secondly, uh, please also mention that uh, data guys. Uttam has asked you that uh, you can incorporate only five uh, uh, gauging station in your model. Yeah, there is a limitation for that. Uh, where is yeah. the uh, latitude luggage? Where you can change? Yes, 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 yes. We, uh, if if uh, we, uh, it's a bad five, the first one is the area of the first first row is uh, about the. Actually, here is a routine. You first is a parameter, second is a meteorological and Low data. Third, third is elevation parameter of our climatic station. The fourth is description of watershed. So we need to we need to just update uh, according to our our catchment, our catchment name or area, the how much glacier area in that latitude. What are the latitude of our climatic station? This one and the starting date, starting date of our run, ending date of our run, like this. So one by one, one by one. Not if these are not. If if somebody is using already hydrological model, it uh, it's nothing for for. It's actually a, it's a problem is for the beginners. If somebody is already know about the hydrological model, it, it is not so big deal to tackle these type of exactly. line, uh, lines or data. It's just few lines uh, like hundred or two hundred lines like this. Yeah, and I would like to ask one more question. Uh, because time is very precious and you have to perform yes. the uh, practice exercise as yes, well. Yes, yes, because yes. Uh, uh, you have mentioned in your uh, output report uh, that uh, this much flow is contributed from the snow melt and this one is from the glacier melt. Uh, on what yes. parameters the model uh, decides uh, that this much flow is coming from the snow and this much from the glacier melt? Yeah, yeah yes, uh, it's, uh, it's all about the mention here. Uh, like, uh, yeah. Yeah, you can see these are the parameters. Uh, our precipitation representation factor from yes. snow and rain respectively, like this. So you have mentioned the yeah, snow also factorial snow. values for these parameters. For sorry, you have mentioned that these factor values for these two parameters that are this we, much. We, we can. We can we find can. we can find from the manual or we can find from the all also uh, shared okay. one literature here like this for the ranges of these uh, of these parameters. Okay, and you have mentioned like a three stages calibration. Uh, yes. Would you please tell me which parameter is most sensitive uh, more, uh, among all these sensitive. parameters so that we can uh, and any, those I, I suggest that I suggest that the, uh, the uh, we should work on the uh, these fifteen. These 15 parameters, and okay. we, because uh, we uh, we suppose that this model already run numbers of time the Himalayas, and its uh, its parameters are uh, those parameter ranges are given in the append appendix of uh, appendix uh, of the of the manual. It, it's a, it's a applicable for the also Himalaya range, but a little bit change in those 15 parameters. 15 parameters that are uh, here are listed. So. If we need to change more and more parameters, I think I think we need to work only need to get the snowmelt, snowmelt, 
from these freaking parameters we need to just have a little variation okay thank you so much thank you i think i shouldn't waste much much time because the practice uh, will be like yeah, yeah we have so, a limited time yeah, yeah. so um further further discuss it with the dr mudha sir can i have one question so I, I yes, yes. yes it's a very brief one uh, you talked about the calibration of the model but uh, if we want to validate the results of this ubc so uh, for that validation uh, is does the model give any option validation also for validation for also we need to just change the our uh, hydrological data and keeping the same uh, with the same environment of parameters Okay. okay. We need to repeat again one step. So repeat again. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Okay, now. Okay, now. I think now we uh, move to the practical session of this webinar. Right. Hands-on exercise. UBC. Firstly, we need to run the UBC watershed model. Yeah. This is this is the user interface for the UBC watershed model. And file. Firstly, first step is like. Uh, tools uh, using the tool we need to convert our input files yeah. from here from here we uh, we have adm file meteorological data files and and we need to browse our located file Here, here we have our climatic station meteorological data, meteorological data file. Just select. It will ask about information about missing data and how. Karma. It's it's an object required error. It's not a big it's not a big deal to come bug multiple times. It comes here. So we need to chart. Can upload the file from another source. Uh, sir, can you repeat? I think I missed some of the steps. I think uh, it is the first step we are doing now. Uh, no, I, I guess you uh, you converted the file. No, 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 not yet. Okay. I think the users, if they are also uh, using this software, they can do in their own system by. Uh, by uh, following the same same methodology, just browse your the provided file. Yes, like this, you can see that uh, if if we have if we just change the part. Change, we just change the uh, directory. Uh, it, it, it is. Uh, it it cannot be done. I think this uh, this this setup is some problem. We can we can perform this this exercise from the our IT IT uh, in charge or handling this. Uh, so handling this or the uh, webinar, as 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 software, as as uh, computer software. Yeah. You you have the data of is us? Yes, I am.
Yes, Hazal, ready? Are you opening the software? Please wait. Hi, uh, since we are waiting, maybe I can just ask a few questions then. Uh, so uh, in the initial presentation that Dr. Mudasar, he did, uh, he referred that the UPC WM model is a semi-distributed physics based model, right? Physical model. Uh, but so far what I have seen in the UBC WM, it's like um, a lumped model, uh, but the, the the processes they are again like physics based and the semi distributed nature if if there is any it is coming from the different band of elevations am i right Hello, is anybody speaking? I, I cannot hear you. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I am Havish Shafi uh, from University of Karachi. Uh, can you please uh, tell us how to set the path so that I don't need to browse time and again to uh, find the file into the software? Hello, did you listen my question? Hello? We cannot hear you. Hello? Uh, no. Okay, now, now Dr. Yes, Ashraf, yes. you can. Okay. Yes, the, the Uttam has a question about the, the basis of the uh, model. I think, Uttam, you are, you are right. You are, uh, it's a, actually, it's, it's a conceptual model. And yes, uh, mm -hmm. but I see that there is some some uh, semi distributed nature also seems like uh, within the model itself, we can specify the different elevation bands and for each of the elevation bands, at least the precipitation station can be different. So in a way it's it's semi distributed also, but the semi distributed yes. nature of of the let's say the hydrological units like the sub basins, they are not here. Yes, yes, exactly. So, uh, so now we sh share or start again our practice session. Firstly, the fr from the ma tools menu, we need to convert our ADM files to BDM. Cho choose the file from the directory. Watershed model. So you, uh, we, we have provided you the UBC input folder and here same files like this. We just need to choose our ADM files and then convert. Here we have already files so we need to overwrite it. So like this the step is first step is uh, completed and the second is we need to 
convert our discharge file. Sir, we haven't seen this kind of this band file, please. Sorry? When we open the conversion tool, we haven't seen this band file. Hence, but, in the, but in yes, but in the folders we have these files. Yes, yes, you cannot see. Maybe say you can. You uh, sometime these files uh, goes to the virtual virtual directory of your uh, of your computer. Uh, you can locate. Uh, you can locate uh, from go to the app data, local app data, or your programs uh, files, and then uh, Gmail. Then UBC uh, UBC watershed uh, folder. You can locate, okay. or you can see, uh, or you can uh, copy and paste you to your original where you want to see, where you want to keep those files. But anyway, but uh, if it is converted or uh, you you cannot see, but it's fine uh, for the practice session okay. because it it will it will up, uh, up, upload again uh, by. Okay, the next is next step is to convert discharge file adq to bdq. Just you see what should model. Yes, adq file. You just select the adq file and okay. Convert now. Yes, yes, you can see it's done. Now the next step is to browse the web file. Next step is browse to add file from the same directory where I think uh, you have uploaded successfully the by the maximum participants. Yes, now you can uh, see the file panel file panel list. We have. We have uh, OK, so uh, after uh, uploading the wet file, you can uh, we can view our uh, converted files BDM. Or BDQ discharge file or BDM. If double click on uh, double click of a, of any any file, you can see the uh, results. Of, uh, you can see the graphic window of the input files like this. It is just for the inputs. So the next step is to next step is to run the model. The in the I run firstly need to run actually uh, I think in this folder it is uh, already run but we can uh, run it again so here we need to confirm the start date and end date Excuse of the provided me, file Excuse yes me, yes before uh, going ahead uh, uh, would you please kind uh, would you please uh, explain only in one sentence uh, what does ADQ mean and, what does BDQ, BDQ is and why file. we need to convert uh, from ADQ because, to BDQ? Because it's, uh, I think it's a ASCII or uh, binary files. It, it does not, uh, uh, the model does not uh, take the uh, firstly accept the AD, uh, ASCII files. Okay, it, 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 yes, it, it first the binary, then, then it process the for, uh, next steps. Okay, so the conversion is basically to uh, convert the data into binary binary yes, form. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes, yes. The, and now after confirming the start and end date, we need to run the model. And it will. And uh, second is to run the statistics. Oh, statistics. After after running uh, the model, we can we can see we have a file clam Yes, it is a. 
it is uh, actually the output file that we have we have acquired from the running the watershed model the next step is to run the statistics here here we need to uh, confirm again the start and end date and make sure the check of statistics for the whole period and month uh, whatever you want to uh, keep for the starting first and if and if you want if the user wants the uh, some uh, others files like season like season wise or specific season wise or for the whole whole period. Here, here I selected just for the whole period statistics file. So click OK. Yes, right again. OK. It's finished. So now we can now we can see the view. Yes. If and also we we can also we can view the uh, our statistics files from the directory it like here you can see this is also uh, a dot sta file you can also view in in the notepad i think in this computer maybe not but you know, we can see it in the uh, notepad file okay edit yes okay here here we need to here we need to uh, if we see its statistic report here we can see our coefficient of determination and coefficient of efficiency uh, like need to confirm from here if it is uh, low 0.5 or if we have a class classification of our performance of our hydrological model performance good very good satisfactory like this So the next is to view the it's a graphical. Okay, if I like double click just output file BDC, and here we need to uh, it's chart of a cycle of one year. Then, but we can see uh, we can see the whole period of our calibration and validation by uh, setting its configuration chart configuration from chart many chart configuration here we need to select user defined number of days is shown on chart like we have a data of three years so we need to if we want to see uh, the whole the whole year the whole whole period data in one window then we need to then we need to uh, put here maximum number of days so x-axis labeling how how the user want Trip, can you please repeat the uh, stats uh, uh, steps how to run these okay okay, okay okay in the end we will repeat firstly uh, the uh, we we well, firstly we need to complete this uh, practical practice session then we, we will uh, of course we will repeat if somebody asks any step okay this is a this is a whole whole period calibration or calibration of the our model hydrological model representation the next the next was uh, the step uh, of i think uh, yes uh, of about the different type of melting from the select component from the last and just need to check whatever the whatever the modeler want of the snow melt or glacier they can they can check that uh, the box
like this. And now we need sometimes we we need this we need this data in Excel. So we need to convert the, this output file output file from output file to in the Excel to make a, make a graphical representation by their own choice or in the better in the better software or for the resolution or etc. So need to tools same same it's the reverse process input data collection tool and here from select from same ADM We need to keep firstly as the the step is same. Uh, like for first, we convert. Here, we need to just select. The files, the result file BDC dot BDC. We need to just select and it will convert to ADC. Yes, it will convert to the ADC. Yes, here, here we can see the ADC file that converted just we now, and now it we can open with a notepad and copy from here. We can uh, we can convert into the Excel or any any other uh, extension where we want. So in here, the description is missing in the uh, the description of headings. Uh, column heading is missing here, but uh, from the visual visual uh, visual interpretation of the graphs, uh, we can put the headings of these. Uh, we can put the headings of these uh, columns. Uh, what type of the results they are getting from here, or uh, is a snow melt, groundwater, or ground uh, or rainfall, etc. Like this, it's our input data. Like uh, as according to the Select component. It it presents the results according to the uh, like number of so many components here in QMix and MM per day. We whatever the users wants, they can get they can get that type of the uh, run of results. So thank you very much. If uh, if uh, you have any question, uh, I think uh, the users performed uh, the. The participant perform this this activity. If if uh, some participant face any problem, then please they, he or she can discuss. Okay. Uh, I, I am having problems while uh, opening the uh, statistics file. Mm -hmm. Statistics uh, file. Okay. Uh, in the from the window. created in the folder, but I cannot view it in the uh, menu yeah. bar. Here, here is a problem. I think the uh, somebody from the group uh, can guide how how um, the users uh, locate their output files. I think uh, some it, sometimes it goes to the virtual memory, like here in this system. Like here in this system, uh, if you can view my screen uh, here. ADC file was not here. It 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 reaches to the uh, it save is a this directory virtual store program files UBC model setup like this. It's a app it, data local like this. So we we can we can view our star file from here. Dot sta file from here. Excuse me, sir. Yes, yes. 
uh, sir, uh, we are having a problem over here, uh, and the problem is stating, uh, prompting like uh, runtime error 91. And it okay, says where, where it's object variable, oh, oh, object variable okay, or with okay. block variable not set. We can remove just now, just go to the chart and set chart configuration. And here, mm -hmm. here the step like this user defined, like number of days user defined 1200, 1300, or it's a, because 1200 by 1200 because of the size, around 1000. So I put here 1200. Then will be then your problem will be solved. I will go to chart, sir. Would you please repeat your repeat the uh, chart configuration? Chart configuration, yes. yes. Set set the first value is twelve hundred user defined. Okay, sir. And twelve hundred or thousand eleven hundred. This Next, might be any number. Yeah, no, not any number because we have data of three years. Okay, sir. So. so so three three years uh, days equal to three years. Exactly. Okay, sir. Got it. Right. Chart Yes. Okay. Any other any other uh, facing any problem? He would can discuss any time in the group or about the physics, about the literature, about the parameters. Till we we will discuss. Uh, if any problem uh, or any question related to the first part of this uh, hydrological uh, modeling for snowfed catchment uh, webinar or second part, um, uh, please please share. You please share the uh, in the in the group. We will uh, we will provide you feedback according to our best knowledge. All right. Thank you very much. So so let's, so. Let's, Okay, uh, after this uh, webinar, now we will share the recordings of it and uh, all the relevant data, including the presentations, user manuals, or the data sets, and uh, also the source codes of the R language. And uh, also, we will share the uh, there are some questions about the R language which couldn't be answered, and we will also share the contact date details of uh, Mr. Hutam. And uh, he also shared two papers of him, of him and uh, we will share uh, these all things uh, in the group or in by email. Uh, and uh, if anyone have uh, any questions, uh, they are welcome. Or we will. And um, one more thing about the certificates and uh, the participants who participated from Pakistan, we will post them the certificates at their respective addresses and uh, for foreigners we have uh, limitations that uh, we, we can only share them the e-certificates. Now uh, I think if there is no questions I uh, invite uh, Professor Dr. Noor Muhammad Khan to uh, give his concluding remarks. Uh, please sir. Dr. Noor Sahib if he is listening. Okay, I think I should uh, remind him. Okay. Okay. The participants can also Excuse me. Excuse me. We need yeah, to uh, um, confirmation about the closing remarks from the director center of excellence in water resource engineering. So, if anybody uh, about the model have any yeah, question, then please. I would like to please. ask a, a question from Dr. Modesi. Uh, I think his name is Madhusri who taught about the uh, model. How many participants uh, successfully run this model? Uh, Assalamu alaikum again. 
sorry, I was a little bit away uh, due to office uh, business. I have been informed that the session, uh, practical learning session, has been completed. Is it so, Dr. Mudassar? I was part of the session minutes ago and he was converting the files and he was showing the statistical method, the statistical outputs. Yes, sir. Did you ask Mike anything? Dr. Ijaz, are you getting my voice? Um. I am seeing in the participant Mubashir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. I would like to ask a question from Dr. Mubashir. And I was listening some foreign accent also. Okay. Uh, yes, yes, please. Okay. Uh, at the end of the session, uh, uh, let me uh, thank you all, all the participants, for uh, sparing time and joining this uh, effort, joining this uh, webinar. Uh, hopefully, all the questions have been answered. Uh, if still there are some questions, uh, uh, you are welcome to send it to uh, communication media. Hopefully, Mubashir, uh, Ashraf, and uh, our colleagues will be answering it. Uh, Ijaz, can you uh, finish the Eco some of the speaker over there and should be closed, should be muted. Eco is there. I think and, now is fine, sir. Okay, yeah, now it is fine. Uh, I would like to uh, uh, congratulate uh, both the uh, speakers and the organizer. And still, uh, I am available. If you have any questions, uh, we can discuss it for a, a couple of minutes. If any question is unanswered, uh, maybe uh, my other colleagues will be able to answer. Or if you suggest, we can uh, uh, have a longer session, uh, more practical nature session uh, can be arranged for this. Uh, yes, sir, definitely, because of the, uh, the sum of the parameter like the soil moisture parameter and uh, uh, the routing uh, techniques and the parameters that they have mentioned in their slides. So I think that they need more uh, emphasis on that as well, like, because how to prepare those parameters for the model. Yeah. Maybe uh, that's good. Good suggestion, Mubashir. And yes, uh, ask Mudassar to uh, uh, maybe arrange uh, one hour or two hour practical session for improving the calibration by changing different uh, calibration factor. I was seeing that he told that these 15 parameters are more uh, more prominent. These 15 parameters are more uh, uh, effective and have more relationship with changing. But uh, if he can tell us that if we change the permeability, how the shape of the hydrograph will change, if we change uh, uh, the storage coefficient, how much, uh, what will be the effect on the lag time and so such things. Yes, so uh, that can be a more elaborate uh, uh, example. And uh, Mudassar, can you arrange a one hour? Yes, sir, why not? It's a okay. complete uh, 100 parameter story. Or the UBC watershed. I would say 100 parameters, maybe some of them are very minute parameters and their uh, 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 standard value can be chosen. But yes, uh, yes. Most parameters which are related to our physical nature of the soil, yes. physical nature of that yes. Uh, area. Yes, so yes, uh, somebody from uh, abroad was as also asking uh, if uh, I can help something. Uh, Anybody from abroad? Uh, Mr. Uta. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I am hearing you. Yeah. Ah, yes, sir. So there were a few comments from from the guest, and they were quite uh, interested in the different kind of bias correction techniques that may be employed with R. So mm -hmm. I had some uh, work done previously on the same, and I'm willing to help if somebody needs any help, any guidance on that one. I have some scripts and some uh, sample nice. exercises also. So, you know, I can share it with all of you so that you can use it in your data presentations also. Yeah, so that's, that's I, nice. 
yeah yeah uh, that's very good uh, one of the purpose of such webinar and seminar is to group together the uh, people of the same uh, interest same mind so uh, through this uh, list of these people who are interested in the uh, modeling hydrological modeling especially the uh, snow fed and glacier fed reaches they can uh, even interact with each other so that is an additional uh, benefit of such seminar that a group is created and then they can further uh, tie up the links and enhance their linkages uh, and carry out the combined research together. Definitely, uh, Dr. Noon. Yeah. That's good. Okay, uh, I think uh, now I formally uh, conclude this session. Thank you very much, Dr. Ashraf and Dr. Mudassar and Dr. Ajaz and all the participants, uh, Irrigation Department, WAPDA, Federal Flood Commission, uh, and all uh, various universities. I was listening to a lady from Karachi uh, thanks for your joining over here uh, and hope to see you uh, in uh, seminars in future also in webinars and seminars. Thank you very much. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. Sir. Yes, please. Yes, please. Uh, I would like to request uh, Mr. Uthman. Uh, I, I don't remember exactly his name, but the one who was talking uh, just before me. I'm keenly uh, interested in bias correction techniques uh, because I'm working on climate change impact assessment using a SWOT model and in combination with other like UVC watershed model. And uh, for yeah. that, I uh, I need uh, uh, as previously I did work on uh, quantile delta mapping techniques and some already generated sheets. And this is what I was uh, searching for, uh, that how could I use our language or uh, our package for bias correction techniques. So that would be so kind of him if he could uh, contact me or he could share the, the reports or whatever uh, he was talking about. Uh, that, that would be so kind of you and I, uh, I would be highly uh, glad to, to know all these uh, in detail. Thank yeah, you so he much. Uh, I, he, he has listened. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely, uh, Mubasar. sir. I, I, you can actually uh, email me also. Uh, actually, some of the participants they have already started emailing me. So you can also email me, and I, I, I will also communicate with C E W R E, and and I will send them the uh, the paper that I wrote, the the sample scripts that I have, the sample files that work directly with that script and do like different kind of bias correction techniques at least eight or nine different techniques are there so all of them they are already um, integrated in the script so definitely i will share it with you and yeah please feel uh, free to oh. modify it but with uh, of course proper reference and everything please please feel uh, free to modify or, or or use it for your research yeah thank you very much okay, sir. Mother, okay sir, sir, thank you so much and sir, uh, and sir, in uh, last, I would also thank you for providing such an opportunity and uh, such a very good platform to meet all the uh, uh, all professionals yeah. and mid-career students. Thank you so much yeah, yeah. Uh, for for arranging such a great opportunity and such a great workshop. Thank you very much so for nice joining. Thank you. Thank very you. Much. Thank you. Okay, I I, I am leaving now. Thank you. Allah. Yes.